Thanks. <sighs> you just you just sniffed that like uh, Buddy did when he poured whiskey into his coffee. Yeah, yeah. Do you have whiskey <sighs> in your coffee? No. Oh, too bad. I could put. I haven't tried old monkey coffee. I don't want to. Might have to risk it with a second cup. Okay. Anybody tried old monk in coffee? It sounds really weird. I don't know if that would be good or not. Ever seen an old monk in coffee? <laughs> Juice! Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Rags. It's of Corbin. I'm Rick. And happy 2022, everybody. Welcome to the new year. Welcome to the nude year. Yep, we're gonna do all of our reactions in the nude. What? <laughs> Please don't. Our naked reactions. Ooh. <laughs> Views would go way down. Oh, yeah. There'd be uh, half the subscribers <laughs> bolt immediately. A mass unsubscribe. Uh, anyways, uh, like we did last year, we are doing our 2021. Right? Yes. It would be, be for the 2021. 2021 year, but this is a 2022, I guess, awards. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> What do we call it? The dummies. The dummies. Yeah, the dummies. Uh, last year was the first year we did it. Which are not like the Razzies. We call them the dummies, but we mean them to be good. Yeah. It's because it's stupid reactions yeah, and stupid yeah, and yeah, dumb. Yeah, you you know. know. You get it. Uh, but yes, so last year was the first year, I believe, that we did it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so this is going to be not our favorites. This is a, we're treating this like it's basically an award show, the Oscars. Yes. And so we're treating everything from an artistic point of view. Yep. Uh, not like um, how... I loved Amir Akbar Anthony. Right. And that's one of my favorites of the year. Right. Just because I can enjoy that a lot. That's not going to make the list of uh, awards. Right. Um, so this is like if this was the Oscars or whatever. Technical I, I, merit. I, I, national award, I guess, is the Yeah, technical one. and artistic or merit. I'm always measuring it by the, the standards. At least when I do these kinds of things, I'm thinking about it in terms of what would... Uh, what would the Oscars do? I would say SAGs, but when we are doing SAGs, it's just acting, whereas the Oscars incorporate all aspects of filmmaking. Yeah. So. And last year we did do TV. We only got to two shows this year. Correct. Uh, and a documentary. So uh, we didn't have enough to do an awards. Yeah. Basically, you can give Samantha for supporting. Yep. And then everything Pretty else much. to Made in Heaven. Yep. I guess. <laughs> yeah. if you, if you, and documentary goes to that documentary. Right. I guess if that's Best what documentary want. is the only one we watched. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so this will be all film. And the way we did this is we narrowed it down to, there's mostly five in each category. Some have a little more because I couldn't decide. Um, and, and we kind of narrowed it down between... How, how big did we make our picture nominees? Because I sent you like 10 options. Uh, 12. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I yeah. couldn't decide. Yeah. I couldn't decide. That's okay, because the Oscars, as I, I agree, the Oscars broadened their best picture uh, grouping to, to 10. It used to only be five, which is ridiculous, and so thankfully it's so 10 So most now. will be 10, I'm five. Yeah. Um, but, and also, we did not deliberate on uh, who wins. So yeah, we gonna, don't know each other's choices. We're going to figure out, uh, based off, right off the bat, his choice might be different than my choice. Also, another disclaimer. This makes no sense. This is all the films of the 80-some of the films that we watched this year, from the 1950s to the 2021s. That's right. So it's not really fair, but that's right. just what we're doing. <laughs> and we do, we, if you've been around long enough, I think you, you would know that we take things into consideration, like, if we were doing visual effects... We are going to take into consideration a film, say, like uh, Mughali Azam, and what the standards were for the day, and compare that to, say, something like Manali, Mar Manal Marani. Yeah. And, and they're, obviously, the visual effects and anything that are done today are better comparatively, but, but we, we take into consideration what was going on at the time. At the time. Yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't really make sense, because obviously there's different years, and this is only 2021 that we saw. So the films that we saw last year, some people are like, well, what about Super Deluxe? Well, we saw that two years ago. That's yeah. not going to be on this list. Right. <laughs> it's only the ones we actually watched and reviewed this year. So for all those disclaimers, welcome to the 2021 Dummy Awards. <laughs> <laughs> the best theme song ever for an award show. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to start off with one of our favorites uh, that we wish the Oscars would do. It's yes. Stunt Ensemble. The Stunt Ensemble. And uh, when I looked over the uh, the nominees... And I'm we, looking at my what I've selected. We looked here. over the nominees. 
Uh, it's all 2021 films. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose. No. But this is, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, I, it just worked out that way to uh, all these films that in this category are all from 2021. Yeah. Um, but, so first and foremost, Sardar Udan. Mm hmm Min Say, uh, you need to read these, sorry. Yeah. Read better. Minal Morali, uh -huh. Shir Shah, and then we've shortened GGVV. That's Gami, you know what that one is. GGVV, the Canada film. The Canada Canada film. Uh, and then, uh, I'll butcher this one, but it's the boxing film, Sarpata Parambarati. The Tamil boxing film. Right. Um, so this is for Stunt Ensemble. Yes. Rick, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Sardar Uda. Uh, that was my second. That was the one I originally picked, and then I was looking back at it, and I thought I really appreciated the work that was done in Shirsha, so oh, that's, I those leaned are, over there. Those are the two that I was in between. No problem with it being Sardar Udon, uh, because I, that was, I actually was thinking that way. Sardar Udon was amazing, yep. and uh, for military-wise, that was some of the better um, stunts yeah. we've seen. It was between those two for me as well. Yeah, um, could really go either way. That'd be one of those, if we're watching the Oscars, as long as one of those two got picked, we'd be happy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, everyone on this was, was really good. Worthy. But yeah, those two are... Uh... Especially worthy, like, if they did stunt ensemble, I'd love for the boxing movie to be noticed, because... They did, especially when we saw it on the heels of Tufan, the, the, the boxing coordination and the, the room for error is so small in that mm -hmm. close counter, encounter stunt work for, for, for boxing that yeah. it, it's worth honorable mention there. VFX is our next category. Visual effects, friends! And that's, so that's um, just, it, you know what VFX is. I'm yeah, you know what that is. I'm not going to explain it. Uh, so Shirsha is one of the first ones that's on there. Sardar Udam is uh -huh. on there. Uh, Bol Bol. Mm -hmm. Minal Morali. Yes. And yes, Bahubali 2. What? Bahubali 2 made the list? Yep. It had... I think it probably would have made the list on visual effects just from the reaction we had to the one with the boat in the clouds. I remember mm -hmm. how blown away we were by yeah. that. Um, uh, but yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what the choices are between the two of us here. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Minimal Morali. <laughs> that was my number two. Yeah. Sincerely, Shirsha was my really number two. really good. Shirsha was my number two, and for the same reasons I selected Minimal Morali. What they did with so little, mm -hmm. and how they did it, and considering it could have been so bad in so many ways, mm -hmm. and they had to be very creative, know where to spend their money, a lot of it was small, which is what I love about the visual effects yeah. in, in I thought about that one Shirsha. as well, but the, the visual effects were just better in Shirsha. It was, it was Hollywood level from, from Agreed. when we watched that one. So. Agreed. And that, for me, I can't discount that reality. They are, it is the better one. I just think the bang for your yeah. buck, yeah. the astonishment yep. of what they accomplished for And me. when I say Hollywood level, I mean the amount that Hollywood spends on their... And we, know, and we know that we do we know India. that they use Indian visual effects so companies for a lot of Hollywood films. They get so buttered. <laughs> We're talking about the money, guys. Yes. <laughs> now this one is actually really interesting that I couldn't find. Oh, there's only four in this category. It's be and we talked about this, I think, at some point. Yeah, but the lead actress wasn't that way for me. Not at all. It was the, only the, the supporting, supporting actresses. actress, and I don't know why. Maybe I'm just overlooking something that uh, that I that we loved so much. But yeah, it was this one was probably the hardest one. Yeah. Not that there weren't like good ones, but there weren't like the ones that I was like jumping Stand off. Stand out, jumping off the screen. Yeah, no, it was crazy. But anyways, uh, these four I thought did really really well. Say their names. Uh, Serving Chawla in Parched, mm -hmm. uh, Rasika Dubal in Kisa, mm -hmm. Ronnie McCurgy in Hey Ram, and then Shafali Shah in Monsoon Wedding. Mm. And I think those are all legitimate good ones. And I wonder if part of the reason for that is because, number one, there aren't a lot of really... Uh, character, actor, well-written, interesting, supporting actress roles in a lot of the films that we've seen At that least are... this year, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of good, great uh, leads. Yeah. Fantastic leads yeah. this year. Uh, but anyways, uh, ready? Yes, let me look at what I selected here, make sure I'm doing this. Okay, yes. Three, two, one. Rasika Durga. Yeah. Ah! Nice! Rasika our, in, in, in Dost. Kisa. Yeah. Uh, our Dost. And we're not just picking our Dosts, we by would, the way. We would never yeah, do that. But she is our Dost. We happen to have, have, have interviewed. <laughs> happen to have interviewed. So for all of you other nominees, if you get interviewed by us, 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, you could also have a dummy. You could also win a dummy. <laughs> yeah, she, just kidding. She was amazing. Uh, everybody in that film was amazing. That yeah, was uh, every, and all every single person in those we love their performances. Mm-hmm. Um, I the the thing for me was this: there was a, there was something something extra about the challenge of that particular role, the nuances we I, and it just. Of all of those, the ones that stayed with me the longest were her and Serving Cello from Parched. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. I guess we're agreed on that one. Now, the actor in a supporting role. This is an interesting category. This is very interesting. Very this interesting is, category. This is all over the place. So we got K.K. Menon, Gulal. Phenomenal yeah. performance. Yes. And we debated on uh, whether that was a lead, a lead or, or supporting. supporting. I think it was more supporting because... Uh, Probably I don't, I don't screen time. Uh, you know, based off of what happened in the film... I'm not going to give it away, because go watch and it. And oftentimes, the difference between a leading and supporting is just screen time. Yeah. So. Uh, KK Men and Gulal. Yep. Uh, oh, Amit Saad yeah. in Kai Poche. Yes. Phenomenal which job. I think that would make a lot of you happy to recognize that we recognized how freaking yeah, he was good great. he was in that film. Uh, Rahul Bose, as well. Bulbo. That, I think, would surprise people for that film. But He was great in that we film. We loved right? him in that film. Um, I'll mispronounce your name, sir, but it's uh, Pasupathi from... Uh, Sarpata Parambarati. He's the uh, the coach who we completely missed in the other movie. Actually, we just no, saw. that was uh, incorrect. Well, it wasn't him. It was apparently they went. Him and that guy went to the same school. The oh, guy, okay. The, the way the, I feel better about myself. The way the guy explained it to me, the English was. Uh, I thought it. Was, I thought it was the same actor. Yeah. So okay. they went to the same school. Got it. Got it. Got Sorry. It. Same and theater then, program. And then last, but definitely not least, how could we not say Kushwa Magumbo? Amrish Puri. Amrish Puri. We watched Mr. India this year. Yeah. And so they <laughs> came out millennia ago. <laughs> but he was that good in that film. Um, that is that film. Um, so how could you not this one put is, it on the list? This, this is, is a tough one. This is one of the hardest ones. Agreed. And, I, and it'll I, be interesting to see what you choose because I think it's between two, to be, to be honest. I think there's two no, that it could be... I could have picked at least four of these. Yeah, for sure. I could have picked at least four. Uh, <laughs> this is so difficult. Okay. Anyways, three, two, one. Amrish Puri. <laughs> Magumbo. Yeah. Kushwa. It's, it came down to just, it's iconic. Yeah. It's uh, iconic. I will say this over and over again about the Oscars, and we've often had arguments about this sometimes, but I know that one of the criteria for some, not all Academy members, but some Academy members, and this is the criteria I have for a lot of things, is... Will I remember this? Whether it's the visual effects, the editing, the acting, the film, whatever it is. Mm. 50 years from now, will people be talking about it and remembering it? And I think 500 years from now, Mm. people will remember this role as one of the best screen roles ever. This is one of the hardest categories because I could have picked Pusha Pathy, KK Menon. We're both fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Rahul Bose did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. job. And Amit as well. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it's just the iconic the level iconic. of Amrish Puri. And, and I bet and all of the other people who are in that group would say, yeah, I can't disagree with you. Yeah. It's got to go to the legend. It because was sad because if he wasn't in there, I don't even know how I'd pick because I it loved would be, all of them. It would be a big roll of the dice to determine of, uh, if he was not in the conversation. But, love all of you to be But he was. Guests. Yes, but he was. Um, anyways, next one. Another extremely difficult. Really one. difficult category here. Score. I will be, I, I'll be shocked if we pick the same one because well. it's such a hard category. So score. Sarda Udam. Mm. Uh, Katyar Kaljet Gusali. Joda Akbar. <laughs> Minal Morali. And I think many of you will be happy that we remembered this, but Fandry. Because mm-hmm. we talked a lot about that. And I'm sure there's some other scores out there that you're going to say, what about it? We'll I, go, think oh, I, I think yeah. I had 11 when I... When this I, was hard. When you sent it to me, I added, yeah. I think, six more on there. Um, this was a really hard category. Uh... Three, two, one. Katyar, Kaljit, Gus- ah, I'm sorry, the Marathi one. Yeah. Um, and this is actually the second year in a row that a Marathi film has won my, because the last year it was... Um, the orchestra the or- thing from that we LA. love so much. Yeah. Um, from, um, sorry, we're getting the name Syrot. of the film. Syrot, Syrot yeah. Um, yeah, this, the, I, 
that film was the was the score, and this it's like I think seventy percent score, seventy percent classical I can't disagree, music. I can't disagree with and that. It's so 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 good, and I it was. I loved all these scores. Joda me too. Akbar is Joda Akbar for me. Obviously iconic. Obviously, we reacted to every single song in that thing before we saw the film. It stood up as did the accompaniment of everything in between. Uh, Fandry. This was hard. Yeah, this was this was this was not an easy, a very one. difficult yep. uh, category. Yep. Uh, next one: production design. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what production design is. Production design incorporates set construction, props, and the overall look of a film. Everything other than hair, makeup, and costume, and the visual effects. But kind of visual effects get incorporated into that because it's the overall feel of the film and the way everything looks on film as captured by location, set, things of that nature. Oh, this category. <laughs> Crazy. Just so here are the nominees for production design. Sadar Odam, Bol Bol, Mughali Azam. Joda Akbar Holy shit. and Minimal Morale. This is a crazy, crazy. Could go to any of those. And I could see why people would be upset why one would be chosen over another. But I, I have a very. I, for me, was this is who it is, and I, I have no problems fighting for it. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I have to rethink. Ah, oh, there's like three. There is. Definitely. All right. Three, two, one. Sardar Udam. <laughs> Can't blame you. Yeah, I, I was... Can't blame you. I, that was the one I was going back. I was like, it was so, so good this year. But I'm, I, for the time... And I, oh, Joda Akbar could also be... I know. Joda Akbar well. was right up there. Uh, for, and that's why it's, it's not really fair, because obviously these were made in completely no, different No, and areas. again, and, and Minimal Morale gets honorable mention to be included because we recognize how good the production design was on that film, they, particularly if, budget constraints. If this was specifically a, a This Year Award, it would definitely be Sardar Udam, a thousand percent. Yeah. Um, uh, and that, that for me is, uh, I think, like, you don't... You know, it could be argued... You don't have production design as good as Sardar Udam without a film like Joda Akbar or Mughali Azam. Azam. Yeah. I just found, comparatively, as good as the production design was in Mughali Azam, the production design for Sardar Udam yeah, it was amazing. blew my mind. It was amazing. Yeah. It would absolutely, like if it was like a, an Oscar contender. It should have been. Uh, in terms of like if this was an American film, yep. it would have been nominated for production multiple, design. In, multiple in so categories. Many categories. Yeah. It would have been. It nominated. is, for, it's for me, without, we said this during the review, Sardar Udam isn't just one of the best movies we saw from India for me. It was, it's, it's one of the best films I've seen this year. Yeah. Period. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. From any region in the world. Next is sound. Sound. I want to go over that. The sound nom go to Sardar Udam, Kala, Shirsha, The Great Indian Kitchen, which might surprise many of you, and the, uh, the little film that could and gets into pretty much every category right now is uh, Mil Morali. Um, because it was. It was that good. It was really, really but good. But I have a very... Uh, this one for me, as good as all these were, uh, there was a close second, but this one wasn't difficult for me. Mm. I don't know about you. Uh, and you want to explain what sound is? Yeah, so the, the Academy here will s differentiate sound with sound editing and sound mixing because they are different. We just incorporate both. Oftentimes it does go to both, but it is a different discipline. We didn't want to get into the technicalities of it. Number one, I don't think we're qualified to do it because we know how to recognize good sound. But um, I have a friend who's a sound editor, and he would know the difference between the sound mixing and the sound editing. I don't have the ear for that because it's not our wheelhouse, but it's basically everything that's taking place in the film other than the score. So every sound effect, whether it's live action caught on set or if it's Foley stuff that's put in afterwards as, as special effects sound, uh, any, and it's also the way that it's done. So that's why, for example, the sound in Great Indian Kitchen can be in the same category as a film as big as like Shir Shah or Sardar Udam because it isn't about how much sound there is. It's about the way the sound is captured and how it's presented in the midst of the storytelling and how it's used in the storytelling. Is that a good explanation? Yep. All right. So here we go. Three, two, one. Shir Shah. Kala. Oh, I, have, I was guessing you'd say that because you had included it, because that's your inclusion. That is mine. Obviously, I love that film a lot more than Rick. Yeah, and I didn't include um, that on my list, but when I saw it on the list, I went, I bet he puts it there. 
Um, yeah, every single one. Even of the... more than Great Indian Kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for for sound, yeah. Um, okay. Just it was going back and I actually looked at some scenes uh, from that film um, and a review, and it was I was obviously I, I liked that film a lot, but the the sound editing of it and and what it made you feel was not only the fight scenes, um, but like just the the nature aspect of sure. it. Sure. Yeah. It was its own character. I. It was so good. I could have made an argument also for Sergeant Udam and Searsha as well. Yeah. Um, but what'd you pick? Yeah, Searsha. Searsha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just, I just, the, the, it's one of the best military films. And I, as you all know, I liked it even more than I liked Uri. Usually goes Uri. to military films. Yeah, and I loved that. Uri. Yeah. But that was one of the things I found so incredible with that film was, and it, it goes with the visual effects aspect of it, that, that just the matching of sound uh, it's it's extraordinary the work yeah. that was done on that film. Yeah, yeah, and it usually goes to military films because they're uh, so hard to do. Yeah. Like I don't know if you know this about a military film. I think I mentioned this a couple years ago, but if you've seen or if you haven't, please do see um, uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Oh yeah, Hacksaw Ridge is a great film. But I went to a screening of that and. Gibson was there doing a Q&A who directed it, as well was his sound team, who's also the sound team that won Oscars for The Lord of the Rings. It was the same sound people. What's amazing about the sound in Hacksaw Ridge is the only audio they took from location shooting in the battle sequences, the only audio they took were voices. Every other sound you hear in the battle sequences, including footfalls, is all post-production. Yeah. Incredible. Crazy. Next is editing. Yep. Um... So the nominees are Sarda Uda, mm -hmm. which seems to be popping up every single every category. category. Uh, Kala, uh -huh. Shirsha, mm -hmm. Minal, Minari, uh -huh. and say the last one. I, I can't even pronounce it. Uh, uh, mispronounce Sarati Parambare. I know it's a mispronunciation. Forgive us. And by the way, for editing, and for those who are not uh, accustomed to what you look for in editing. Uh, it's one of my favorite things. I've t I talked about this in theater class. I don't remember if I did this with you in class, but okay. there's a, a a sequence in Open Range that was directed by um, um, why is my brain not working today? Good grief! He stars in it too. Dances with Wolves. Kevin Costner. <laughs> um, Kevin Costner directed Open Range, and it's beautiful the way he edits the first ten minutes of the film where they're out in the open range, and then the next sequence when they first go into the town and when you count this just the speed of the edit clips uh it the storytelling of the editing is actors will tell you this who do film it can make or break you you can do a bad performance and the editing can make your performance great and vice versa so uh yeah it's a huge huge and important part of the storytelling process so three two one Sardarudan. <laughs> yeah kind of that one was remarkable, mm -hmm. as well was the continuity Especially work. The last, the last sequence, minutes. that last forty-five minutes of him and the whole. If you haven't seen it, please do. I think you know it's about what led up to the massacre. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that that film was this next one's incredible. Equally nuts. Yeah, it is. This next uh, category is some, equally nuts. Uh, costume design. I don't even know how you pick this one. Sardar Udan. Yeah. Mughali Azam. Yeah. Joda Akbar. Good grief. Mother India. Good grief. And, and the little movie that could. Minari. Minal Morali. Yes. Uh, that's a toughie. Look at that. That's a, Just, come on. Yeah, that's a toughie. Uh, but, three, two, one. Mughali Azam. Udan. That was my second choice. <laughs> yeah. Sardar Udan just made you feel in that era. It did. It, it was... It was it was <laughs> Oscar level costuming done. It was, uh, and they spent a lot of money on that film to get the costumes. They correct. got it right. But here's what's funny: we switched, and for the same reasons, our production design and our costuming. Because <laughs> I chose Mughali Azam for the exact same reason. I felt like the, the era yep. they got yep. um, it, that I, I just couldn't not, even though that was my second choice. Because I agree with you, it's Oscar level. Uh, costuming for that era and that period, so yeah, I, that's why this was such a hard, hard category. This next one's uh, interesting. Has some, maybe some surprises. Some people might think hair and makeup. Sardar Udam. Wait a minute. Oh wait, go go through the list, then I'll say what I'm gonna say. Okay. Sardar Udam. Yep. Sar Sarpata Parambare. Yes. Yep. Joda Akbar. Uh huh. Hey Ram, and Bob Biswa. Which is your inclusion? Yes. Yes. Uh, and it's mainly because of what they did to. Um, little bit. The transformation of, of him, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's just like in um, Darkest Hour. 
just what they would obviously that yeah. was uh, on a much higher scale yeah it definitely does get that for that makeup transformation I'm, um, I'm glad you didn't say it was for the cgi tears no <laughs> no obviously not that uh definitely not that. no but i i would agree with that and i'm i'm i uh I'm glad you picked it. And I thought I, that most of that film was uh, done very, very well. Yeah. Especially for her first time directing. I thought she did a phenomenal job. And um, so I wanted to Not, include... No, no makeup for Amar Akbar Anthony? The, the orange blood you didn't want to include? <laughs> Maybe next time. Next time, okay. Uh, but I honorable love, mention. I love that film. I could talk about that film all day. Yeah. Hair and makeup. Mmm. This is one of those, and this may give you a... I don't know about Corbin, but I, that for me, for hair and makeup... The year that The Revenant won makeup, I, when somebody wins that I really want to win, I wind up running around the house. I ran around the house when The Revenant won because the, the makeup in The Revenant is so small. And it's, it's very, very difficult to do small makeup, especially that's over time. So the fact that it won, that might give you a little bit of a hint as to where I would lean as it pertains to hair and makeup in this category. Three? Two? One. Sorry, Sorry I wrote dumb. <laughs> it was actually between that one and the Tamil film. Sorry. Yeah. For the, bo for the boxing, right? For the boxing. Yeah. Um, I thought they both did so well in, 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 in creating the period that they were in. Um, I thought the makeup and hair for both of them was phenomenal. Yep. Sardo Adam, just on top of the costuming, it was just uh, top notch. Top notch. At yeah. every level, on everybody. Again. The continuity of makeup, because that's a big contributor to makeup and hair, is continuity. And if the person and the, the the woundedness or the injury or even the hairstyle, it's got to look the same from frame to frame. And that's not just up to the continuity advisor. That is up to hair and makeup to make sure it is for each. I mean, they take pictures. The amount of detail and time, especially when you're working on something as massive as a film like Sardar Udam. Uh, so, yeah, but we're agreed. Uh, next is screenwriting. Little disclaimer. This is a hard one for us to judge the right way because we don't speak the native languages. Yeah. Um, we're getting it primarily based on story, whereas there's nuances with the language in an English-speaking script we can pick up on the turn of a phrase, the use of poetic license, the quoting of things from American literature or European literature. So we understand that our choice in screenwriting is, is not going to be the same as it were if we spoke the languages natively. It's going to be primarily based on story. Parched. I have another sip. Oh! The movie. Uh, which, it's the first time that's made it on this list so far. No, we got parched with uh, um, actor, uh, the um, uh, supporting actress. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, parched. Yep. Loved that film. We loved it. GGVV. Kind of a film. I yep. just can't pronounce the title. Sardo Udam, mm -hmm. The Great Indian Kitchen, Ooh. and Kisa. Ooh. Ooh. Three, two, one. The Sardar Great Indian Udam. Kitchen. I knew that was going <laughs> to... And that might be a harbinger of things to come, kids. <laughs> we might have had a little foreshadowing there. Uh, the Great Indian Kitchen. Uh, it's, it's actually, it was actually between... Uh, there was... It was probably between Gradient Kitchen and GGVV. I actually loved GGVV's script and it was a, It's a great script. And Parched. I loved Parched. Every single one of these yeah, is a fantastic, fantastic script. script. But um, it was just something different that it, we watched it in January of last year. And it's still yeah. stuck in my mind that that script of that film yeah. um, is just... And there's not actually... There's obviously dialogue, but there's not. it's not a heavy dialogue film. It's a lot of silence. It's a lot yeah. of... But it gets the story across, and I thought, it's so good. Yeah, and this, this category, Udom, right? I did. Okay. And this category is one of those where there's times in the Oscars where I see all the nominees, and I'm just happy they were all uh, chosen, and I have a personal favorite. And if it wins, I'm like, yeah. And if it doesn't, I'm like, oh, well, because I can't say the other ones didn't deserve it. Of all of those scripts, I can't say if any one of them were picked. They don't deserve it. Yeah, it's a great, yeah, it's a, hard it's category. Great. Uh, and you wanted to? Yeah, we were doing a lifetime achievement, and if I'm not mistaken, we've only done these awards once. And last year, our lifetime achievement went to Irfan. So we just wanted to give an honorable shout out because I think we've seen enough of his stuff and know enough about this lifetime achievement that it goes without saying that, that Satyajit Rai would get our nod for the second time of a lifetime achievement of the things we've seen in Indian cinema uh, would never be 
the same without yeah. the contributions of Sachi. Probably the world highest, cinema would never be the same. The highest honor he's ever got uh, in his life, I mean, for sure. Yes, uh, probably. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyways, next. Ooh, ooh, we're getting into the meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes, kids. Cinema cinematography. This one. This one's another. freaking. Insane. Tough. And there's actually six because I, I couldn't not put any of these in here. Yeah. Parched. Yeah. Bulbul. Yep. Sardo Udam. Yep. Labor of Love. Yep. This is the first time it's gone. There, it right? is. Yeah, first yeah. time it's on the list, but it's deserving. Minal Mulari. Yep. And Rajasthanalism. Ronastazil. <laughs> Say the actual name of it. Cause it uh, Rangasthalam, I believe, is the right and pronunciation. And if you saw a review, you didn't really love that film, but that. Point, that is the highlight of that film for us. It was that's all we talked about. Absolutely as far as gorgeous. Being, being blown away by the cinematography. It was gorgeous that yep. film. But uh, so uh, there's six in this category because I think they were all so so good. It'll yeah, be interesting I, to see what you yeah pick them yeah you too. I think I know which one you're going to pick and it will surprise everybody. But let's see. Three, two, one. Sardar Bobo. Udom. That's what it was. <laughs> I was pretty sure you'd pick Bobo. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's still stuck in my mind. It's yep. My favorite. Visually of the year. It's gorgeous. Uh, that film was so pretty. Yeah, it's it's hard to do that one because this this is I mean, one cinematography of the, is not just pretty. That, that I just yeah, just of course that. not. It's yeah. not just the aesthetic, but there's other things that go into it. The difficulty of the filming is something you take into consideration. Yeah, uh, which was part of it. Like again, citing the Revenant, the Revenant was all done with natural lighting and in circumstances that were brutal for the crew, but. You have two completely different kinds of films uh, uh, contributing to what they did. They both had to use visual effects and big production design, but the world of Bobo is so much more fantasy than Sardar Udon being rooted in historical accuracy. So the, the measuring rod is very, very different, and it does just come down to pure subjectivity. The cool thing about the Oscars, we say this every year, is that in the world of cinematography, that category is only voted on by cinematographers. Yeah. So they know the ins and the outs way better than even it's like an actor knows enough about cinematography to be able to make a good estimate on what was hard or not but the cinematographers they know even more to help it get over the edge so sometimes when they pick a film that i didn't pick i kind of like i can't blame you you know more than i do <laughs> yeah, about it <laughs> um next category direction yes Ooh, ooh, another, another good one. tough one another good one parched it's showing up a lot now. A lot. Because uh, it was so, so good. It was. Uh, Iruvar. Sardo Udam. The Great Indian Kitchen. And Labor, Labor of, of Love. Labor of Love is back. Three, two, one. Sardo, Sardo Udam. Udam. Which is Sujit Sarkar. Uh, yes. I believe is his name. It is. Correct. And that might surprise y'all because you know how much I loved Labor of Love. And we just raved about Iruva. Oh, and, uh, yeah, we just how, did. How well. Um, um, and how much we loved Great Indian Kitchen. But yeah, Sardar Udam. Sardar Udam, to everything that just came together so, so well. Um, he, so he many elements. Handled it incre incredibly well. It's such a great film, and he did yeah, such a phenomenal job. He's such a great director. I said this in the review. I'd love to talk. And to it's him. the highest compliment I can give because he's my favorite director, but the, the level of direction in this at all levels was Spielberg esque. Mm -hmm. It was so freaking good. Yeah. Actress ah. in a leading role. This one is. This Ooh. is an amazing category. Yeah, this is real tough. You want to read those names? Stand the Radhika Apte, <laughs> Parched. Ooh. Kanikas Rudi, Briani. Y'all remember that? We didn't forget. Basab uh, Basab Chatterjee mm -hmm. in Labor of Love. Mm -hmm. Nimisha Shajian in The Great Indian Kitchen. Uh -huh. And Tilatama Shom. Oh. In Kisa. Such an amazing performance. Yes. She put on such I'm very movie. interested to see where this goes. And who was your, like, close second? Uh, all of them. <laughs> yeah. I think they, they, this was really... This is... Uh, of, of the categories, this is the one I probably labored the most over in terms of how do I choose. Uh, uh, every single one of those has its own strength that is hard to select somebody else over. Mm -hmm. But I did make a choice. Three... Two, one. Radhika Opte. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that performance, and uh, it, maybe I have a bias, even though she's not our dost. She yet, yet yes, yet. yet. Uh, she just did so amazing. That's probably one of my not only I think one of the best films of the year, but one of my favorites of the year. That Agreed. film is so watchable. I love that film. And so good. 
uh, and she puts on such an amazing performance and she's so vulnerable, but she's yet so strong. Yes. <coughs> But also, I can make an argument for every single one of these in this list. Well, yeah, because... <sighs> Tilatama. I, Tilatama. That scene when she was talking to Irfan at the end, the, you almost could have won it for her. And that's the, the only thing, and it's not her fault, is the way that was directed. Yeah. I tried to disassociate myself from that and recognize that it has nothing to do with her. And I also... Uh, the subtlety and the, 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 the... So much being said without saying anything for Namisha in The Great Indian Kitchen... Mm -hmm. And then Briani was Ugh. that film is her. Yeah, I mean she carries that thing. For me, I felt like parched. First of all, it's the one that I feel like I'll remember the longest. Mm. Um, and I was so impressed with Radhika's willingness to be naked, and I don't just mean that in terms of what she was able to do with her body. I meant in terms of what I felt she was bearing in her soul. And I also think that this is a, a dangerous role in terms of an established actress doing something that could put her in a position where other people ridicule her for doing what she's doing and saying that what you're doing is not okay. She was going out on a limb per se and saying, this is something I want to do because I'm an artist. That, that was what gave me the... And the Wonder Schlong. And Wonder Schlong helps. Yeah, gotta love the Wonder I mean, any role that you're in and you're playing opposite Wonder Schlong, it's gonna elevate your performance. God, it's my favorite part. Yeah. Uh, Actor in a leading role, another incredibly different one. Also, one that has six because I couldn't decide. Yeah. Um, Vicky Koshal. Yep. Sardoda. Yep. Ritwick. Chakorty. Yep. Labor of Love. Yeah. Uh, Sushant in Kaipoche. Raj Shetty in GGVV. Phenomenal performance. Fafa in one of the five films he came out with this year. <laughs> no, uh, this one specifically for Joji. For but it also could have been uh, Malak yeah. uh, as well. I, I went back and forth on, on which one I thought he had great performances, but I thought this one was more memorable for me. Uh, and then Nawaz in Manto. Uh, our dust. Our dust. Gotta love our dust. We can say that about our dust. Um, this, is, this one was incredibly, incredibly difficult for me. Re this one's really, really hard. You know what's the most surprising one for me, because I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, uh, and I think we said this during the review, was both our actor and, and supporting actors from Kai Poche. Yeah. How good. Absolutely. I was not expecting award-level performances from them in those roles, especially yeah. the newcomer at the time, yeah. Shashan. Absolutely. Yeah. Three, two, one. Vicky Raj Koshal. Shetty. Yeah, I almost went with Raj Shetty. He had such I, an amazing performance. I had selected Vicky and thought I was done. And then at the last minute, this was last night, I thought, 50 years from now, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be remembering the film Sardar Udam probably more. But I'm never going to forget Raj. And yeah. that dance, dance sequence dance. in the rain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was, it was between those two for me, I think, as well. Um, but the, the, the Vicky, the, the range she's now shown, the emotion you can't shown, argue with that. He's so, so good. No, I'd be happy if, if it was the Oscars and he won and Raj didn't, I'd be a little bit disappointed because I felt like Raj deserved, but I couldn't be unhappy with yeah. Vicky being chosen. Absolutely. And, and now the drum roll, everybody. <laughs> best picture. The best picture. Overall. Overall. And this is all 80-something films that we saw this year. Yes. That were all from very different years. Yep. So there's um, 12 films. One. Nominated. GGVV. Mm-hmm. Another film. The Great Indian Kitchen. Manal Murali. Labor of Love. Joda Akbar. Briani. Mughali Azam. It's been a great year. The Big City. Yeah! Phenomenal uh, from uh, yep. our... our our future dost. Uh, <laughs> such is it right. Sardo Udam. Shocked it made the list. Really surprising. Uh, parched. Sar... Say it? Yeah, Sarpata Parambarai. And, this is my entry, Love. Yeah. I couldn't not put, it, couldn't in not put it in Obviously there. Obviously it's my entry. If you saw the review, you know exactly. whose entry it was. It was Corbin's uh, entry. I st every single time it came up, I was like, ooh, that film was so good. <laughs> I hated that film because it was dumb. Uh, but anyways... <laughs> Oh, this list, we had a lot of good films this year. And now, now, there's not only award-worthy films that we had this year, but in terms of just entertainment films, yeah. we, I, we had very few bad films, I feel like. I agree. I, I, I would say, and of those films, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking to myself, there's a bunch of those that I added to my all-time favorite list, just 
period. Love. Yeah, uh, no. Um, <laughs> but after we make the selection, there's something that needs to be said in regard to measuring. Because like we said, we're spanning 50 years of cinema here. If not more, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's actually more yeah, than maybe, that. Maybe 60 years 60 of cinema. 70. Uh, and what, what it is that would make you choose one versus another. So yeah. here we go. Three, two, one. The Sardar Great Indian Udom. Kitchen. And that's, a, <laughs> that's why I said earlier, foreshadowing of things to come. It was never not that yeah. film for me. I know. That film is... That wouldn't surprise stupid babies either. Uh, the same for me. I think they would all know that would be that my was, pick. And, and I guess you can tell now which film for 2021 we also thought was the best film because yeah. both those were from 2021. Those were both from 2021. Um, now, here's to say... Uh, how do you say that those two films would be considered the better picture than, say, Joda Akbar or Mughali Azam? Uh, here's... Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to do that. Yeah. Um, and if somebody, this is not really fair. No, and if somebody said... Like, I'm sure if we... Because that's what um, Air Rahman said his favorite film was, was Mughali, Mughali Azam. Azam. And I think if I told him that I picked Sardar Udam this year over Mughali Azam, he'd say, you're nuts. Mughali Azam's a much better film than Sardar Udam. But... Mughal Azam has the benefit of standing the test of time. Yeah. Sardar Udam doesn't have that benefit just yet. And I think when you consider the, the, for me, yes, it's incomparable Mughal Azam. But what that film accomplished, what Sardar Udam accomplished, and the importance level of telling a story from history that ought never be forgotten and thankfully now it's captured on celluloid so that people can see it and hopefully never forget it and to be done at that level of quality and there's something to be said about a film that actually had good white actors in it that pushed it over the edge for me <laughs> just the white actors. just the white actors but i can't again i have no bone to pick if these were if this was the oscars and great indian kitchen won I would not be unhappy with that having won. I would think, ah, I, I really think Sardar Udom deserved it, but I can't say that Great I, Indian Kitchen I, doesn't. I, it just came down to... It's a great film. There are no flaws in Great Indian Kitchen. Not one. Um, and the only I could find one flaw, and I thought Sardar Udom was a slightly long film. Uh, didn't bother him. Go watch the film. It's an amazing film. But that was, that was basically what it came down to. It really? Was like, I can't... Think yeah, of a flaw. In for, for me, it came down to importance, yeah. remembrance in 50 years from now, and the size and the scope and how many other things could have gone wrong in Sardar Udam versus um, the intimacy and the smallness of Great Indian Kitchen. But again, it's, it's very much uh, how do you compare... Um, I, I was talking about this with somebody recently about the current roster of films that are in the awards consideration here for SAGs, Globes, and Oscars. And... I was comparing a film, the two completely opposite kinds of films, because in the conversation you get that. And it's like saying, how do you compare Honeycomb to Icicles? They have, they have, they're, they're in nature, so they have that in common. So like there's these two films, but they're so completely different. How do you say which one was better? For me, it always goes back to the size and the scope of the accomplishment and how difficult it was to actually make it become good and the importance level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, I know it didn't win any awards. Minal Minari was a fantastic film. I think uh, we would have had it in, in like, and it what, won. 10 categories? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, it, 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 the villain didn't make the acting category. I probably could have if I would have put an we extra could've. one. Because he was the one... Even though I, I was very sad that he, he didn't make it, I thought he was phenomenal. He yeah, absolutely, absolutely could have. I probably just should have added him on, on an extra spot because I believe he deserved it because yeah. he was so good in that film. But yeah. anyways, yeah. And was... I think we did that last year. We did some honorable yeah. mentions because there were so many things Another in certain honorable categories. Mention? Mimi. Yeah. I struggled not putting her on. Yeah. But when I saw the strength of those other roles, I thought, I can't. Yeah. In terms of just enjoyment, that was probably one of my just an enjoy, most enjoyable film. Absolutely. And, and angry film yep. of the year. Uh, that film was so good. And, and Creedy was so enjoyable in that. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. It's, uh, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what dumber. you thought your picks would be and why we are idiots. Yep. And hopefully we got to 80 plus this year. Hopefully next year we'll get to 100. Yeah, which was overall films. the first year. I think we did like 60. 
And then the, in 2020, we did like 68 or something like that. And then this year, we blew it out of the water comparatively. We did like 80, how many? 80. Two or three. 82 or three. Yeah. We're trying to get to a hundred this year. And you know what I'm doing this year? Mm. I've, I'm already keeping a list. So it's fresh on my mind of the films. Like when we see a film and I'm like, okay, I'd nominate this for dot, dot, and dot. I'm keeping a, a running tally yeah, probably good. for me personally this year. That. Let us know what you thought down below. Just